Hello everyone, welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. In this particular segment, we're going to be looking at how to prepare for the KEEM exam, which is Kerala Engineering Architecture Medical Exam. Let's start off with our first question. 100 grams of calcium carbonate is treated with one liter of one normal hydrogen chloride. What would be the weight of carbon dioxide liberated after the completion of the reaction? Is it 5.5, 11, 22, 33, or 44 grams? So, first of all, how do we solve this question? For that, we need to know the reaction when calcium carbonate reacts with hydrochloric acid. The balanced reaction goes like this. CaCO3 plus 2HCl gives CaCl2 plus CO2 plus 2H2, I mean, no, not 2H2O, just H2O would be correct. So plus, let's erase that. So it'll be calcium chloride plus CO2 plus H2O. Now, let's look at the quantities of the reactants given here. We have 100 grams of calcium carbonate. Now calcium, um, it ha now calcium carbonate has one calcium atom, which has a gram atomic mass of forty. Then we have um, carbon, one carbon atom, which has a gram atomic mass of twelve, and we have three oxygen atoms, which have a gram atomic mass of sixteen each. So let's try sixteen times three. Six threes are. 18, 1, 3 is 3, 3 plus 1 gives you 4. So that will be 48. So we will have 48 plus 40 plus 12. That gives you 100 grams. So therefore, the given mass here is equal to the molar mass of calcium, calcium carbonate. So therefore, the number of moles in this case will be equal to 1 for CaCO3. How do we find out the number of moles present in one normal of HCl? Now remember, the given quantity is one liter of one normal HCl. Now if one normal of HCl is present in one liter, it, it has the same amount of molecules as one liter of one molar HCl. So one normal is a unit where is a measurement where we measure the number of gram equivalents over the volume. Here we have in molarity we have the number of moles of the solute over the volume of the solution. So one liter of one mole HCl corresponds to one mole of HCl because molarity is the number of moles divided by volume. So if you were to multiply volume to molarity, you get the number of moles. Now, in the given question, we have one mole of HCl and one mole of CaCO3. Now let's look at the experiment, I mean the reaction. If we look at the reaction, one mole of CaCO3 and two moles of HCl would provide for one mole of carbon dioxide. But in this case, we only have one mole of hydrochloric acid. So therefore, this acts as the limiting reagent. Remember, in reactions, it's important that the number of molecules be the same. So therefore, if you have one reactant with less volume, the, uh, the corresponding amount of the other reactant will only react with this particular reactant. 
the, the leftover reactant will not react with the product or with anything else. So that's where the concept of stoichiometric ratios come into play. So according to our stoichiometric ratio in this reaction, two moles of HCl would provide for one mole of carbon dioxide. Therefore, if you have one mole of hydrochloric acid with you, you would need, you would only produce 0 0.5 moles of CO2 because 2 times 2 gives you 1, so therefore 1 times 2 will give you 0 0.5. Again, we have to use the stoichiometric ratio in this case. So, we would now need to find out the weight of CO2 liberated. We now know the number of moles, we only need to convert it to weight. So therefore the given mass here would be equal to molar mass times the number of moles. For CO2 that will be 12 plus 2 times of 16 which is 32 which gives you a total of 44. So 0 0.5 times 44 grams would give you 22 grams. So the final answer would be option C 22 grams. Remember, we're looking for the weight of CO2 liberated, so therefore option C would be correct. Option E here would be the option E here would be the molar mass of carbon dioxide. However, we don't want that because the weight of CO2 liberated is not equal to its molar mass. Again, options D, A, and B are also incorrect because they are not numerically correct to the answer that we just solved. So the answer that we got after solving this question is 22 grams, which corresponds to option C. So that's the correct option. And now for the final question. No, I mean, it's not the final question. We do have another question coming up. But let's look at this question. It's quite an interesting one. The relationship between the energy E1 of a radiation with a wavelength of 8000 angstroms and the energy E2 of the radiation with a wavelength of 16,000 angstroms is E1 equals 6E2, E1 equals 2E2, E1 equals 4E2, E1 equals half of E2, or E1 equals E2. So, which of these is correct? How do we find out the answer? We would need to use the formula for energy. Now remember, According to the photoelectric effect, energy equals H times nu, where H is the Planck's constant and nu equals C divided by lambda. Now, the nu here is the frequency. C here stands for speed of light and lambda starts stands for wavelength. So according to the formula here, energy is inversely proportional to wavelength. So if you have to compare two energies with different wavelengths, then the comparison goes like this. E1 divided by E2 would be equal to lambda 2 divided by lambda 1. So if you plug in the values of the wavelengths, you get 16,000 angstroms divided by 8,000 angstroms. So you can cut off all the zeros. 8 times 2 gives you 16. So therefore, E1 would be equal to 2 times of E2. And using that comparison, we can understand that option B, E1 equals 2E2, would be the correct answer. All the other options are incorrect because according to the solution that we have, when we um, find out that energy is inversely proportional to wavelength due to the photoelectric effect, and using that inverse relation, we compare two energies with different wavelengths. And when we compare them, the answer turns out to be E1 equals to E2. Let's move on 
to the final question of this episode. So, which one of the following sets of quantum numbers is not possible for an electron in the ground state of an atom with atomic number 19? So remember, sometimes questions ask for what is not possible. So therefore, it is important to solve everything and then find out which of the solutions isn't possible. So, we know that each electron in an atom has a set of quantum numbers. There are four quantum numbers in to total. We have the <clears throat> principal quantum number, the azimuthal quantum number, the orbital quantum number, and the spin quantum number. So there are four of these quantum numbers which form a set for every electron. Now, we have an atom with atomic number 19 in its ground state. So, let's find out the electronic configuration. The electronic configuration here would be 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2. I mean 4s1 because it's just 19. Now, the principal quantum numbers can range from 1 to 4 because there can be an electron in the first shell, an electron in the second, in the third, or even the fourth shell. If we look at the azimuthal quantum numbers, these represent the subshells that each electron may be present in. So therefore, you can get um, you can get s or p because there are only s and p orbitals in this configuration. So if you are, have an electron in the s orbital, I mean in the s subshell, you'll get an azimuthal quantum number of zero. If you have a p, you get an azimuthal quantum number of 1. And depending on your azimuthal quantum number, the orbital quantum number changes. So, if we were to check out our options, you'll find that option A is plausible. Because n will be equal to 2, that means it's in the second shell. L equals 0 would mean the s subshell. So it will be in this 2s orbital. For option B, n equals 2, L equals 1. That means it's in 2P, which is, again, possible. n equals 3, L equals 1 means that it'll be in the 3P orbital, which is, again, possible. If you look at option E, it's n equals 4, L equals 0. Again, that could be the lone electron present in the 4S orbital. The only option here that is not possible is option D. Now let's look at why it isn't possible. If you see here, n equals 3, so that means it's the third shell. But if you look at the azimuthal quantum number, it's L equals 2. Now L equals 2 for the D subshell. So if you have a D subshell, then the value of L is equal to 2. But in this um, electronic configuration, we do not have a 3D orbital. So therefore, this configuration cannot exist for the ground state of an atom with atomic number 19. So therefore, option D is the only option which is not possible. And because the question is asking for the, quest, for the option that's not possible, it becomes the correct option. That concludes this episode of Cream Crash Course. Now, we at Agile Rankmate focus on providing carefully curated content. So, we would like you to use our content for your various purposes. So, until the next episode, take care, stay safe, ta-ta for now.